Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today we're answering a viewer question. Eddie C asks, how do ducks and other birds keep their legs from getting frostbite in the winter? How a bird reacts to the cold depends on what kind of bird it is, and there are a variety of different methods that they use to keep their legs warm from the mundane to, well, the much more fascinating. For starters, many birds will simply pull their legs and feet close to their center of mass one at a time. This keeps them warm with their feathers and body heat, and also keeps the legs off the cold ground. Likewise, some birds crouch down and cover both feet with their plumage. In particularly cold weather, the bird can also fluff up its feathers, trapping air between the feathery layers to keep extra warm from head to toe. If there are other birds around, they may also huddle together while doing this to keep warm. Another slightly mundane but also very helpful method of keeping themselves and in turn their feet warm is body fat. Towards this end, some birds will gorge themselves before winter, not just for the energy store, but to build up a layer of fat to help shield themselves from the weather. Further, as a last resort, most birds can shiver their flight muscles to generate body heat, not unlike how the cold-blooded honeybee keeps the hive warm in winter, though this comes with the problem of physically tiring the bird and perhaps limiting its ability to fly. Concerning the feet and legs more directly, many birds' legs are covered with a rough scaly skin that limits heat loss. Not to mention, the legs and feet often have an incredibly small surface area compared to the rest of their bodies, limiting the amount of skin actually exposed to the cold. So now we move on to a creature like a duck, which has positively huge flat feet that are not only exposed to the elements, but may be submerged also in ice-cold water. Well, in these cases, the birds have a rather nifty trick up their non-existent sleeves. They use a counter-current exchange system. Indeed, some birds can submerge their feet in ice-cold water for hours at a time without any real consequence. In a nutshell, countercurrent exchange simply means that the bird's veins and arteries are aligned in such a way to facilitate heat exchange between warm blood being pumped toward the feet and the cold blood being pumped away from them. What this means is that recently cooled blood from the bird's feet is warmed before it reaches the bird's core, while at the same time blood from the bird's core is cooled significantly before it reaches the feet. This makes sure that they aren't duly heating the blood returning to the core and the water around their legs and feet with their core temperature blood, which is often about 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius, or more depending on the type of bird. Instead, the lace-like formation of the bird's capillaries ensures that a lower but sustainable temperature is maintained in the feet, sometimes only just above freezing, as is the case with emperor penguins or ducks swimming in a nearly frozen body of water. This allows them to endure freezing temperatures around their exposed feet while minimizing heat loss. Further, birds with this evolutionary trait can actually control the flow of blood to their extremities using a series of muscles located in the top of their legs. In extreme circumstances, some can even cut the flow of blood off completely, though only for a short time without any damage. They can also indeed go the other way when overheating to use their exposed feet and ability to control blood flow to cool themselves down when they're too hot. However, this system is far from perfect, and it's noted that, for instance, if a duck is left in a warm environment before being put directly into a freezing one, it can sometimes struggle to adapt and may result in the poor guy getting frostbite on its feet. So, well, yeah, despite all the methods of keeping their feet warm previously mentioned, ducks and other birds can get frostbite, and sometimes they die from the cold during particularly harsh winters. And now for a bonus fact. Bird poop is white due to their kidneys extracting nitrogenous wastes from their bloodstream and subsequently excreting it in the form of uric acid, which has a very low solubility in water and emerges as a white paste-like substance. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And do not forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, let me thank our patrons on Patreon. If you want to support us, please find a link in the description below. Also, some videos from the archives over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.